painting peeps and welcome it's Kathleen from Cos Creations welcome to the no bra zone number two guys I am glad you're here I've had a lot of people ask me to talk more <laughs> to talk more during my paintings and um, I'm okay with that um, it's just sometimes when I start to paint I get into the zone and I think about things and I walk around my painting a few times and decide if I'm satisfied if I want to keep going sometimes when I keep going it works out the stars are aligned and sometimes it doesn't so today I'm going to talk a little bit more to you so those of you who do not enjoy the talking part fast forward or mute me so just a couple of little pointers that I have learned along the way that I would like to share with you now our base coat is already down our base coat is titanium uh, buff by Amsterdam I apologize I use this to prop up my canvas when I put my uh, base coat down and let's start there the base coat is already down but guys after I do my sides and then I pour a good amount of paint and tilt my canvas so that the paint rolls down I generally take one of my ball jars and I stick it back there and I prop it up and I do that for two reasons so that most of the paint that is not needed rolls off but also at that angle the way my light hits it I can see if there's any imperfections if there's any goobers if anything is in there and a lot of times I torch it while it's still tilting because of the light above my head and in front of me I can see the air bubbles a lot better so I hope that uh, helps I get that question a lot why do I tilt my canvas so our colors today our colors are yummy we used them the other day but I'll go over them quickly this right here is Lucas studio acrylics and that is the indigo I love these paints Sarah Taylor reminded me how nice they were and I reached out and ordered some new colors and I'm pleased with them they're very easy to mix easier than a tube paint this is Lucas Studio Acrylics as well, and this is their Payne's Gray. We are getting our blues on today. Right here we have Charvin Indigo, another paint that Sarah Taylor turned me on to. It's a yummy, yummy, yummy blue. Right here we have Arteza Pearl Sea Green, but what I did is I added a little bit of the Charvin indigo to it just to richen it up a bit it's so fun to play with your paints guys some wonderful things usually happen when you do and this is the Arteza pearl sea green all by itself now the description box guys a lot of people don't know it's there i list all the paints the music the pouring medium the paint to pouring medium ratios all you do is tap on that title a box opens up and it lists everything including my email in case you ever have any questions and need to reach out deco art metallics pewter those of you who watch me know that this is one of my favorite colors right there and this is the deco art pewter with a little bit of the golden iridescent silver in the fluid paints mixed in i started out with the pewter put my pouring medium in added a few drops of the silver until i got it to the hue that i wanted and then a little more pouring medium look at the consistency guys very creamy it rolls off the stick nicely kind of like um, dish soap rolls off nicely leaves a little bit of a trace when the paint hits the paint in the cup below our pouring medium today 50% Floetrol 50% GAC 800 I keep it in a big old jug I strain my Floetrol halfway up that jug and then I add my GAC the rest of the way and every time I use it I stir it really really good guys 
because Floetrol is heavier than Golden Gak 800 and it sinks to the bottom. We are doing, oh, if you see me pull out this cup, that's just more of our base coat. I use it as an eraser or whatever I see fit. Last color, forgot to talk about this guy. He's important. Decor Satin Enamels, that is their neutral beige. We are going to be doing a ring pour slash cloud pour. The Deco Art Satin Enamel is mixed with the same pouring medium, 50% Floetrol, 50% Golden GAC 800. Now I wanted to go over um, my cloud pours a little bit. A lot of times you see me do multiple cloud pours, or excuse me, ring pours, and I do one at a time. A lot of people do several at a time, but there's a reason I do one at a time. I'll do my first ring pour, I'll tilt my canvas, I'll get the majority of the excess paint off the canvas, I'll center or off-center my composition and get it right where I want it. Then I pour my second cup. The reason for that is if is the second cup, because the first cup was manipulated, the majority of the paint is gone and it has stopped moving, then when I add my second cup, the second cup doesn't alter the composition of the first cup. So um, I've also done it the other way. So it all depends on the, um, the look and the feel that you're going for. I like my negative space. Let me tell you why. I'm madly in love with acrylic pouring. I just can't stop playing, experimenting, and trying to find new ways with it. But acrylic pouring can be very busy. There's a lot going on with cells and lacing and colors and movement. And I feel that the eye really needs a place to rest when you look at a piece of art. So that's why I'm kind of a negative space kind of girl. Sometimes I don't leave much negative space. Sometimes I add more negative space. That's why I call this my eraser. I can use my base coat color or one of the complementary colors in my painting to add more negative space because that's my jam. It might not be everyone. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my cup. I'm gonna stop periodically and talk about a few things that I think are important. And uh, we're gonna get painting, guys. I'm glad you're here. when I get to this point there are some decisions that I need to make I stare at this composition and I find the parts of it that really really appeal to me like this section right here it almost looks like a peacock feather I know that if I tilt and open this section up where the satin enamel is kind of heavy it's gonna make some beautiful big um, puffy cells. 
um, this area is lovely as well. It's got some nice wings going on. Now I'm going to need to exit some of this paint off. And at that point, I also have to decide what I'm willing to sacrifice. So I know I'm going to sacrifice some of the top of this painting by tilting my canvas this way. I'm also going to sacrifice some of this side because I know that this satin enamel part right here is a little heavy and it tends to take over which means this section right here as well as this is going to get stretched out a little bit so let's go ahead let's start tilting guys <music> to decide what my composition is going to look like. Now, I still have more paint that I need to exit off this canvas. And once again, we need to decide what we're going to sacrifice. Do we sacrifice something on the left side? Do we sacrifice something on the right side? Do we sacrifice something at the top of this painting? Now, I'm going to sacrifice some of what's at the top of the painting because I love what's going on here. I'm also going to sacrifice a little bit of this blue. So um, I'm going to tilt my canvas this way, and then I'm going to tilt my canvas this way, and then I'm going to bring it back to center. Something very important, I watch where the weight of the paint is. So right now the weight of the paint is a little bit over here on my canvas. I want to take off some of this. So I'm going to tilt my canvas so that the weight of the paint is in the area that I want to move off the canvas. And if you look really close, you can also see that I have a little buildup of base coat right in through here. So I'm going to use that bit of a buildup to help me move my paint. Let's get busy. just a little bit of a buildup of my base coat here and I think I might pour a second cup down here. If I leave that buildup and I tilt my canvas, that paint is going to roll down and affect the composition of the next cup that I pour down here. So I'm going to take some of it away. There's not a lot of it. I have a damp paper towel here and I have my base coat. Now, if these colors here were underneath this base coat and I swiped across here, it would bring those colors up. But I know that these colors are not underneath this base coat, so we should be safe. Also, I want to stay away from this line because if my paper towel grabs any of these colors it's going to drag it across the canvas so I'm going to just stay right in this area right here and try to remove the excess base coat that is there before I keep going on now my paper towel is damp I dip it in my base coat just to make it a little bit more, oh, what's the word? So it glides across my canvas a little bit better. And I work better from left to right, guys. So I line it up right there at the top of my canvas and I just do a slow drag because I can see better than you that I have a little puddle of a base coat in there. Now most paints are self-leveling guys. 
Now you can see that the base coat has moved down here a little bit, so I'm going to give it one more swipe. Slow and easy. Now, whenever you swipe, guys, it tends to create air bubbles. So you really need to do a good amount of torching so that those air bubbles are taken care of and don't pop up later. So let's give this guy a torch. Now, sometimes when you do the dragging of the paper towel across your canvas to help eliminate some of your excess paint, if your paper towel goes over the edge a little bit, it tends to sink down and pull a lot of paint off. I don't know if you can see this right here, but I've got a little bit of canvas showing, but not much, so I'm just going to dip my popsicle stick in my base coat, run it along the edge there. I do this usually after the camera is done rolling just to make sure that my sides and my edges are in good shape. And then you've seen me use this. This is my Puffy 2000 and I love it. I got it from the nice people at Pour, Scrape and Repeat. But instead of tilting that little bit of paint that I put there to cover up that canvas, I'm going to blow it instead. And there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and prepare another cup and we'll keep going, guys. <laughs> things I can tell you about what to do while you're pouring your second cup is keeping in mind the composition of the first cup. The most important thing is to keep your distance if you don't want to mess up this line because when I start to tilt this remember we've got the weight of the paint of the second cup we also have the weight of the base coat that's down between the first and the second cup. And when I start to tilt this, if this paint moves in this direction, even if it doesn't get real close to this line, the base coat will because this paint is pushing the base coat. And if you're not careful, you'll push, push the base coat into this line and this composition will get wonky. And if it gets wonky, you can fix it. You can fix it by swiping a section of it using a little bit more of your base coat color. Lots of things to do. So that's the most important thing about that second cup. As well as, as I'm traveling with that second cup, I'm paying attention to what the paint coming out of it looks like. And that dictates to me if I speed up or if I slow down. All of these things are things that you'll learn as you practice, guys. So let's go ahead and get tilting this guy. <music> to how my paint is moving. Let me wipe my gloves so I don't drip. My paint is now moving very, very slow, which means the tilting part of this painting is over and done with. I do not have to exit any more paint off my canvas because my paint is moving very slow. And I know that I have the proper amount of paint still left on my canvas. So this is the part where I look at my composition and I decide if I want this 
section of my painting to move closer to that section of my painting. If maybe I want to get rid of this rogue uh, little pearl cell right here, if I want to stretch this out a little bit more, or if I want to condense it. So the rest of my time spent on this painting is determining exactly where I want my composition to be. <music> I'm pretty much done here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check all of my sides and let me show you. If you look at this side right here, you can see I got some sporadic little drips there and I want it to be a little smoother. So I'm going to pour some base coat color over this edge right here. Check the back side of it, which I cannot see and give it a final torch and then we're good to go. Guys, if at any time you have a question, there's no such thing as a silly question. There is no such thing as a bad question. My email address, causecreationsart at gmail.com is always listed in the description box. Don't hesitate to reach out if I can help any of you with your painting journey. Thanks for being here, guys. That was fun.